Okay, so this video is <clears throat> going to be uh, relatively long, uh, so uh, there's going to be seven examples of problems I'm going to go over, um, and they're all going to use these rules. Uh, so a couple of things we're going to go over are some basic rules of logarithms before we go ahead and get started, and then we're going to apply these rules, and I'll talk about them as we go. But uh, if you're new to logarithms, it's really you just have to remember these rules. So here we go. All right, so... Um, first things first, if the logarithm of base A of some M is equal to log base of the same base, okay, so notice the A, both bases are A's, in our examples there'll be numbers like 2 and 2 or 3 and 3, 4 and 4, whatever you want them to be, okay, but if you take logarithms of the same base and uh, you're having them equal to each other, then what you're taking the logarithm of right, must be equal. So that's rule number one, and that's extremely important. And the reason I make this rule number one is because this is the secret to solving logarithms. This is how you solve them. You must make this true. So in this video, every single problem I'm going to do is going to revolve around a, um, rule number one. So I must have a logarithm equal to a logarithm of the same base for me to claim that the things I'm taking them of are equal to one another. Okay, rule number two. Rule number two is a basic one, that if you have log base A of A, meaning if you have the logarithm with some base um, of its same value, then the value of that is one. Now, in our problem for equations, we're actually gonna work the opposite way. So we're actually also going to use another rule that's kind of important that you need to know, and that's the multiplication identity of one, that if you take a number and multiply it by one, you still get the value of A. So we are going to use this rule out of algebra one, okay, so it's the multiplication identity of one, all right, so we're going to use an algebra one rule so that we can solve our logarithms as well. All right, so these rules are important. Um, stop, memorize them, write them down on your notes um, before I proceed in this video, because once I change screens, then you won't have them anymore. All right, so logarithms, right? So if I have the logarithm, so continuing on, if I have the logarithm base A of M and I'm adding this another log, same log, same base, of another variable, number, or whatever it may be, what you can do is you can write it as a single log as the interior is being multiplied. So remember, logarithms are like exponents. So when you added exponents, remember that you had like bases that were being multiplied. So this is kind of the inverse of that. So when you have like bases for logarithms that are being added, right? you get to multiply the values they're taking it of. So it's the inverse of the exponential rule. So if that makes sense, right? So in exponential rule, if your like bases were multiplying, right, you could add the exponents, right? Understand that? So the logarithms are the reverse of that. So if I'm adding my logarithms of like bases, then I get to multiply the value that I'm taking the log of. So it's the inverse thought of that. Okay, and it's the same thing over here for number four. Number four states that if I have a logarithm base A, so if I have logarithms, same base that are being subtracted, right, you get to divide them. So like you did in exponents, right? Think of the reverse. If you had an exponential rule where you were dividing like bases, you got to subtract their exponents, okay? So that's what we're doing here. So in this case, it's the reverse of that. So subtracting like bases gets you to divide what you're taking the logarithms of. Okay, and it's always the first one minus the second one. The first one is the numerator, the second one is the denominator. So the subtractor is the, uh, the divisor, okay? And then number five, we have another basic rule that we used uh, in a video before, all right, for logarithms. So it's how you undo an exponent, right? So log base A of M to the N. So if you take the logarithm of something with an exponent, you get to remove the exponent because a logarithm undoes exponential problems. So for our video, right, we're going to have to go the opposite way. So we may start with something like this, and we're going to go the opposite way. So we're going to go from this form to this form. Previously, in a, in a problems we've done, we went from here to here. But in logarithmic equations, we have to go from this form to this form because all the way back at rule one. So all of these rules that I just introduced 
pause the screen, write them down before I go ahead and get started on the first example. But here we go. Okay, so first example, right? So first example is going to go off of rule one. So rule one, what we're going to notice here, okay, the very first thing we're going to note is that I have two logarithms with the same base. So therefore, okay, if we called this, oops, sorry, if we called this m and we said that this was n, then m must equal n. So in the case of our problem, what we can now claim is that 4x plus 2 must be equal to 14, okay? So what's important is the recognition that the bases are the same. And then from here, we can now set their equal, and now we're back to algebra 1, so minus 2, minus 2. 4x equals 12, therefore x equals 3, and then that's my answer. Now, there is another rule with logarithms that I'm going to just bring back to you again. Okay, so the logarithm of any base A, all right, of m, okay, equal to y, right, or just anything there, right? So if you have any logarithm such as this, okay, what you need to remember is that your m, your value of m, or sorry, and whatever it may be, right? So your value of m, whatever, okay, your m must be greater than zero, okay? It has to be greater than zero, and that goes back to the rules of logarithmic functions. So logarithmic functions, if we remember them very quickly, just to show you a picture of them, your basic logarithm is the inverse of a basic exponential. So your input, right? So if this is your input, okay? And for logarithms, this is kind of considered our input, our value of m, okay? It must be greater than zero, okay? So I just want to show you that. So now, this x equals three. We can't just say, oh, x is greater than three. It's greater than zero. We're good to go. What you have to do, all right, is you plug this back in anywhere you see an x, and you make sure that your logarithm, okay, that your actual logarithm is a value of a positive. So in this case, to show this example, all right, it would be log base 2 of 4 times 3 plus 2, all right? And all I'm going to check, all right, all I'm going to check is that this is a positive number. I don't really care about anything else. After I solve it, all right, I just want to make sure that the answer is indeed positive. So 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 2 equals positive 14. I'm good to go. Check. That is a solution. Okay, so these are some older rules that we're bringing back into play right now, but I just want you to know that. All right, so going on to the next example. All right, so here's this next example. It says log base 2 of x plus 7 is equal to 3. So now here's a problem, right? Our conundrum is you need to have log base a of m being equal to another logarithm base a of n. It's the only way you can solve this. You can't solve these problems any other way. So here's where we're also going to introduce the problem that I was talking about before, where a times 1 equals a, all right? And then we're also going to use here that log base a of a is also equal to 1. All right, so don't get stuck on the, the variables I'm using. I'm just using the variables that you'll find in many common textbooks. Just watch the process that I go through, okay? So question, the, the first goal or objective, okay, is to make this happen. I have to make that happen or I can't solve these logarithmic equations. So the first thing I'm going to do, all right, is I notice I have a logarithm on the left side, but I don't have a logarithm on the right side. So what I'm going to do Okay, is I'm going to think of this. I'm going to write this as 3 times 1. Okay, and now that's important, and you'll see why in a second. But now that I have 3 times 1, I have another logarithm rule I can use. And I can use this last rule, where log base of anything, okay, to the a of a is equal to 1. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to take this 1 right here, okay, and I'm going to use it here. So notice... 1 and 1, so I'm going to use this as an equivalent expression. So now when I do this problem, right, I'm going to take this value and I'm going to make sure it matches the one that's in my problem. I'm not just going to make up any one. So here we go. So writing this in, I now have log base 2 of x plus 7 is equal to 3 times, and here comes my problem. So 1 is going to be turned into log base 2 of 
2. Okay, so that's now how I get a logarithm in the problem. But now, okay, we have a little bit more work to do before we go ahead and do this. I now I'm almost there, except the problem is, is in my problem, I have a coefficient. So in front of the logarithm of the second logarithm, I have a coefficient. So because I have this coefficient, right, it's just a matter of utilizing a rule of logs that gets rid of this multiplier. So how do I get rid of this multiplier? And the way you get rid of that multiplier is by utilizing our, our, another log rule. So it's an older one that we used, and that was log base A of M. Okay, so if I had that, so if I have a multiplier of a logarithm, it turns into that same logarithm, that same base, except now the x the multiplier can be written as an exponent, okay? So we're going to go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and, and get that through. So applying that rule, you get log base 2 of x plus 7 equals log base 2 of 2 to the third power. And now what I have is I'm back at that very first rule. And once I have that very first rule, it's now just claiming that the interior of the logarithm, so the thing I'm taking the log of, so x plus 7 must equal 2 cubed. And then we can go ahead and solve this. So x plus 7 equals, well, 2 cubed is 8. We subtract 7, we subtract 7, and we get x is equal to 1. And now before we go ahead and say this is a solution, we're just going to double check that this value of 1 does not make our original logarithms a negative value because we can't take the logarithm of a negative number. So x equals 1. So we take this value, and anywhere we have a logarithm, we're just going to check to make sure that, in fact, our logarithm is positive. So 1 plus 7 is 8. We're good to go. All right. All right. Okay. So we're a couple examples in, and now I'm about they're about to amp up in level. I'm about to use more rules. So what I need you to know is that solving logarithm equations is a game of how well do you know your rules. If you don't memorize your rules, you will suffer from that. So on that first slide that I went through, make sure you memorize those rules. They're very very key. On to the next example. All right, so now, next example. Next example is log base 3 of x plus log base 3 of x plus 2 equals log base 3 of 1. So again, the rule that we're going to use is if you have logarithms of the same base, if you're adding them, okay, it's the inverse of the exponential rule. So adding like bases, now you get to multiply, okay? So here we go, let's get to it. So. I can now write this, and you don't get to get rid of the logarithm. That's very important. So this now can be written as log base 3 of x times x plus 2. Now, when you have all these parentheses like this, sometimes it's extremely helpful to not write this one as a parenthesis, rather to write it as a bracket. Okay, And that is equal to log base 3 of 1. All right, so now we have that rule again. We have log base 3, log base 3, and we can go ahead and we can now move forward. So here we go. So I can now claim that x times x plus 2 is equal to 1, and I can now solve this. So this becomes x squared plus 2x uh, is equal to uh, is equal to uh, 1. And from here, I can now go ahead and I, I can solve this problem. So first things first, I subtract 1, and I get x squared plus 2x minus 1. Oops, sorry. I guess I should write this as minus 1 on both sides. And I get x squared plus 2x minus 1 equals 0. And why is it that I'm solving it this way? Because when you have a quadratic, right, you have to solve them by setting them equal to 0. Now, I would want to try to factor this, and I would hope that it factored. But unfortunately for this problem, it's not going to factor. So what can I do to try to solve this? Okay, did you get to it before I did? That's right, it's a good old review problem. This is called the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is going to be that x 
is equal to the opposite of b plus and minus the square root of b squared. So b squared is 2 squared, which is 4. And we're going to subtract from that 4, okay, 4 times a, which is 1, so I'm not going to write it. I'll write it times 1 times c, which is negative 1. And that is all going to be divided by 2 times a, which is 1. All right, so moving forward, I get x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 8. So that all inside there simplifies to 8 divided by 2. And at this point for our, our problem, what I can actually do here is I can go ahead and I can uh, solve this problem as is, or you can simplify it. It's up to you. I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. So x equals, so negative 2 and this 8 Okay, I'm going to uh, reduce that with this 2, and I'll show you how in a second. So this becomes negative 2 plus or minus. So square root of 8 turns into 2 root 2. All this divided by 2, which now enables me to reduce, reduce. Okay, so now remember for rules that you can only reduce these if they all have a common factor. So negative 2, 2, and 2 all do. So I get x is now equal to negative 1 plus and minus the square root of 2. And now, as I said, this example gets a little bit harder because I'm going to introduce a lot here, all right? So I've already introduced a logarithm rule, and now I'm bringing back review on solving a quadratic, okay? So don't get lost in that part. One of the most important parts of this video is the rule of the logarithm, but here we go, moving forward. So now, my answers are approximately that x is approximately going to be... Uh, Negative 1 plus the square root of 2 is going to be approximately 0 0.414. And the other answer to this is going to be approximately negative 2.414. Okay, so now, back when we were doing quadratics, remember I talked about just because you do the math in a problem doesn't mean that everything is an answer. What you could have is extraneous solutions. So what I'm going to do for logarithms, I'm going to check that if I were to plug this number in, this first one, does it make any of my logarithms become a negative? And in the first example, this would be 0.414. This would be 0.2414. And I wouldn't have an issue. However, if I plug this one in, okay, I immediately get a negative here. Okay, I immediately get something that I can't do with that x. And what that is called is an extraneous solution. So while we produced two answers from the quadratic formula, you must remember that one of those ended up being an extraneous solution. You cross it off, and your final answer here to this problem is going to be uh, this x equals 4 uh, 0.414 if you want to leave it in exact terms. If your teacher was like, I want it in exact form, you would say that x is equal to negative 1 plus square root of 2, and that would be your answer. So uh, I know these are getting a little bit more complicated because they're getting a little bit more in depth, but uh, let's move on to example 4. Okay, example 4. It's just a long problem. And it's going to involve the rule of subtraction, okay? And the nice thing is, is that notice all of our logarithms here are of the same base, which is good, all right? So here we go. Let's get to it. So if you have subtraction, subtraction, logarithms, same base when you subtract, remember you get to now divide the things you're taking the logarithm of. So it doesn't get rid of the logarithm. It just gets rid of having them as separate logarithms, and what it allows you to do is combine two logs into one. So here we go. So log base 5 of, now remember, this is the numerator because it's first, so x squared plus x, and the second one is the divisor, so 3x plus 3 is equal to log base 5 of 2. And now at this point for solving, I'm not going to worry about reducing here. It's pointless, right? because I'm trying to solve. What I'm going to use is my logarithm rule. My logarithm rule states that x squared plus x divided by 3x plus 3 must be equal to 2. And now at this point, okay, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to solve this, okay? And when I go ahead and I go through solving this, I'm going to do this problem as if I would any other day of the week. And what I'm going to do is uh, instead, okay, instead of crossing things out, this is a good review problem. 
do not try to reduce this, okay? You can reduce it in the sense of uh, factoring to make your life easy, but don't get rid of anything. So the way you solve rational equations, because this is a rational equation. So I'm bringing this into the problem to review some things. That's what makes these problems hard is when teachers introduce these rules, you everything comes flooding back in. Okay, so this is now a rational equation. And rational equations are solved by setting them, okay, equal to zero. So when you solve this, you're going to write this as x squared plus x, okay, is uh, divided by 3x plus 3. And we're going to say that that is equal to, okay, Two. So now, rational equations, right? If A over B equals C over B, then, okay, A must equal C. And that's how we're going to solve this problem, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides, okay, and make them common, divide, common denominators. So I'm going to write this as 2 times 3x plus 3 over 3x plus 3. So now that I can claim that my numerators are equal, okay? So I hope that makes sense. I don't mean to make these complicated, but this is why logarithms are hard because it floods back in every single equation and rule. So <clears throat> moving forward, I now have that x squared plus x is equal to, do the distributive property, is equal to this 6x plus 6. And now I can go ahead and start solving. So I get x squared, okay, minus 5x minus 6 is equal to 0. So all I did was set it up equal to 0. And now for this problem, I'm going to go ahead and solve it. Now the nice thing about this problem is that it goes ahead and it factors. So it factors into x minus 6 times x plus 1 equals 0. And I will get that x equals 6 or x equals negative 1. Now remember, what you have to do here is you have to make sure that your answer produces a value that's greater than 0, right? Because you cannot take the logarithm, all right? You cannot take the logarithm of 0, okay, or or any negative. So when I plug this in, I'm just going to check, do I have any extraneous solutions? So if I plug in x equals 6 up here into my problem in the beginning, I'm not going to have any issues, right? 6 uh, squared plus 6 is 42, and 3 times 6 is 18 plus 3 is 21. So this answer checks out, all right? I don't create any negative logarithms. But if I plug in negative 1, okay, the first one is, is going to make 0, right? Negative 1 squared is positive 1, but then I add negative 1 to it and I get 0. And that now produces an issue because I can't take the logarithm of 0. Remember, it has to be a value greater than 0. So this x minus 1 is what we call an extraneous solution. All right, so I hope this is all making sense. I hope it's all coming back to you. Um, but... Uh, Yes, so the hard part of solving these problems is not necessarily the rules themselves. You do need to know the rules, but it's going to be the expressions that the logarithms create then there after that flood in. All right, let's take another example, look at another example. All right, so we bump this one up a level and we make it a little bit harder um, because now we have a non-logarithm with two logarithms. So remember in the first video, what I talked about was, okay, well, I have one. So remember, bringing that rule back, that log base A of A is equal to one. So the very first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take care of this one, and I'm going to turn it into a log base two. And again, I'm using a two because that's what's in the problem of two. All right. So there's my one. It's completed plus uh, two log base 2 of x plus 2 is equal to log base 2 of 9. Okay, so now from here, I'm going to continue on with the same problem. So I have another logarithm rule, and the rule that I must take care of first is this. So I'm going to get rid of that 2, and I get rid of that 2 by turning it into an exponent. 
So this becomes log base 2 of 2 plus log base 2 of x plus 2, the quantity squared, is now equal to log base 2 of 9. So again, I'm just tracking through my um, logarithm uh, rules. So the rule I'm trying to get back to is log base of 2 equals log base 2 of 2, so I can make their things equal. So same bases adding. I can now multiply the interiors. <clears throat> so this becomes log base 2 of, and I'm going to use brackets now this time. Okay, so bracket of 2 times x plus 2, the quantity squared, equals log base 2 of 9. And now that I have this, right, and, and one of the things I don't do when I'm solving logarithms, I don't worry about simplifying within the logarithm. I'm just trying to get to the part where I have log base of the things the same so that now I can claim the interiors are equal, and I'll worry about reducing in the equation as I go along. So now what I can claim here is that 2 times x plus 2 squared is equal to 9. And the goal is to try to solve this. So the way I solve it is first things first, I must square this. So that turns into 2 times x squared plus 4x plus 4 is equal to 9. And then I can go ahead and I can move forward. So I'm going to put my work over here because I'm running out of space. So this becomes uh, uh, 2. Well, it, two ways I can do here. I can distribute this or I can divide it out. I'm going to go ahead and divide it. Um, so when I divide by 2, divide by 2 on both sides, I get x squared uh, plus 4x plus 4 is equal to, well, 9 divided by 2 is 4.5. Uh, so I'm going to write that as such. I'm going to write it as 4.5. And then now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to solve this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 4.5, subtract 4.5, and I get x squared plus 4x uh, minus 1 half is equal to 0. Um, now when solving this, I don't really like this, right? So inevitably, I don't like the fractions, so I'm going to clear that fraction. So there's a, a cool thing you can do to clear fractions. Uh, you can multiply both sides of your equation by the divisor, and ironically, that's going to take me back to something I could have just did earlier. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So I'm sorry, don't get lost in my equation solving here. Um, I'm just, I realized that when I did something, it would have just been much easier had I just distributed the two in the first place. So instead of doing all this and undoing all that work, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to recognize that it would have been much easier as opposed to dividing out that two, would have been much easier to distribute it. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to do that now. So what I get is 2x squared plus uh, 4x plus uh, oops, sorry, not 4x, plus 8x, plus 8 is equal to 9. I have a quadratic, so I'm going to set it equal to 0. So I get 2x squared plus 8x minus 1 is equal to 0 when you subtract 9 from both sides, right? And now here, it's just a matter of trying to solve this. And um, so let's try to solve it. And unfortunately, uh, doesn't look like it's going to be factorable, so we're going to try this quadratic formula. So therefore, x is equal to negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 4 times 2 times negative 1 divided by 2 times 2. And I'm going to get x is equal to negative 8 plus or minus the square root of uh, 64 Okay, and it's going to turn into plus, so 64 plus <coughs> 8, and 64 plus 8 is the square root of uh, 72 divided by 4. Now, the square root of 72, all right, so if you take the square root of 72, you get um, approximately uh, 8.485. And that's extremely, extremely important. And the reason I say that, all right, is simply because I now know that if I take a negative 8 and I add the square root to it, I'll get a positive number, okay? So, again, that's extremely, extremely important. 
So if I take all of this, I will get x is equal to, and, uh, and I'm just going to type this all into my calculator, okay? So I'm typing negative 8 plus the square root of 72 divided by 4, and I'm going to get an answer, okay? And the answer you get when you do that is you get, a pro you get approximately, when I typed all that in the first time, you get approximately 0 0.121, okay? And then comma... All right, if I did that again, but I did it negative, so if I took the square root of 72 and I made that negative, right? So just uh, when you plug it in, just make sure you're making it negative. Um, and then you, if you were to subtract 8 from that, okay, and then divide that by 4, okay, and uh, get an answer to that, you would get negative 4.121. So, with that being said, all right, okay, I have my two answers again, all right, I know this is a long example, and I know that they're, they're convoluted because now I'm bringing in all of this solving stuff, and you can't get lost in it, but notice I'm getting to my answers just by doing quadratic formula, and I get an answer. I got to check, does this make my logarithm up here negative? And in this case, 0.121 will not make it negative, so that one checks out. However, if I plug this negative point, uh, 4.121 into this problem, it will be negative 2.121, and I cannot take the logarithm of a negative number, so therefore this is an extraneous solution. Okay? So... We got one more example to do, and then uh, this video will be over. Sorry, it's quite quite lengthy. Okay, so uh, for the purpose of this video, I just realized how long it was. I'm not going to do another example. It's not really necessary. The the one that I had, we already have an example of it. It just would have been something with a rational equation. So um, if you have any questions, um, let me know. But please, please make sure you go back. And, and you have to memorize the rules. Watch these videos a couple of times if you need to. Um, don't get lost in the solving the equation part. That's old. That's older stuff. That's review. That's good for you. Watch them separately. Watch the part of how I get it to a logarithm, okay, equal to a logarithm. That's kind of like the bread and butter. Then after that, this is all review, okay? So the logarithm part is the new part. After that, it's all review. So I would just highly suggest making sure you're getting the logarithms to the point where you can do a problem. Uh, they're long problems because they take time to get to one another into logarithm equal to logarithm. And then you're stuck with problems that are review, whether it's a rational equation, whether it's uh, a square root or whatever it may be. But uh, yeah, take a look at it and uh, let me know. All right. I hope it helps. Uh, sorry for the length of this video.